Michael could have been a television evangelist. He was suave and debonair. Frank was kind of like a 600-pound gorilla. You know, he sleeps where he wants to sleep. When you become powerful and rich, you start believing you're omnipotent. You're nine feet tall and you're bulletproof. And unfortunately, that is a very dangerous situation. There were only three possibilities. It was an accident. It was suicide. It was murder. This was a very strange event for the senior executive of an international bank. There was usually a, a big story behind that sort of behaviour. Our first job was to go down to Nugent Hand and marshal all the, all the records. As we walked into those premises, they were in the process of actually shredding information. If I had any doubts that something was seriously wrong, those doubts evaporated on day one. After Frank Nugent's death, it was Michael Hand's turn to be the center of a controversy. Quite simply, he disappeared. This was a great example of a magician doing a card trick. Change your hair color, puff up your cheeks, here's a mustache, click, click, right to the airport. This was an international bank, branches all over the world. Who were the directors? They're all US military. Admiral Earl Yates, president of the Nugent Hand Bank. Walt McDonald, former senior CIA man. William Colby, former chief of the CIA, the bank's legal advisor. These were not your average bankers in what is not an average bank. We saw telexes coming back, which would suggest that Nugent Hand was trying to put deals together to move guns and ammunition to South Africa. I had a firm belief at that stage that Michael Hand was a former CIA operative. We weren't Boy Scouts. You know, we, this wasn't a church camp. When you were selected for Special Forces training, you could pretty much look people in the eye and say, I'm one of the chosen few. And Michael was a product of that environment. When he got out of the military and went to work for the Central Intelligence Agency, was the next step. Michael Hand told me that the Nugent Hand Bank would be the repository for funds coming in from various CIA enterprises, namely drugs in Thailand. Chiang Mai was a transshipment point for drugs themselves, and these guys up in Burma had money coming out the fucking wazoo. So they had to have a way to move it. What better way than the Nugent Hand Bank? We gained a very strong impression that the Nugent Hand Bank was in fact a financier of the drug trade around the world. I really believe that Frank Nugent probably became crazier than a shithouse rat. Frank Nugent was prepared to offer $50,000 to anyone who could compromise me as Attorney General. It was suggested that I could help them with their problem. They just told me they could make arrangements to get me into Australia and that they'd get me out. Why do you have to come all the way to Hong Kong to try to find a hitter? Yeah, no, excuse me. You can go down to King's Cross and get a pimp to do this. Sorry, guys, you got, I don't have the skills to do that. I'm, you're talking to the wrong guy. Michael instructed people to marginalize Frank Nugent. That was a bad plan because it played into Nugent's dysfunctionality. It's like giving a drunk monkey a hand grenade. It's not, will it go off? It's just, when's it gonna go off? The ABC said that he'd been shot dead. And I just couldn't work out, was this a murder? Because I couldn't fathom in my own mind that would have been a suicide. Probably an execution was my immediate assumption. He was carrying the list of names of all these drug traffickers and the name of the former head of the CIA, who does have a reputation for killing people when the need arises. He had most his property was a Bible they found in the car. And in the Bible, it was indicated to me that there were certain passages, sentences and words that were underlined. And I drew the inference from that, that but person or persons were a serious threat to his wife and children. It is undoubted that 
Nugent Hand Bank was involved in drug trafficking by sending money backwards and forwards between drug cartels. Why was no action taken against the directors of the board of that company? The Royal Commission was so dismissive of an American connection, many people simply felt that it was a cover-up because it was in effect so superficial and so dismissive. It's like in the Western movies, it's horse shit and gun smoke. Maybe from the Australian side there was no evidence, but at one point, Nugent Hand became the conduit bank for the CIA. Once you're dealing with corrupt governments and the CIA and the movement of monies, this was a change of direction from which we could never go back. The penny ante organised crime was nothing compared with this. My view was that uh, Michael Hand disappeared because he knew how to disappear. He walked out of that court at Lithgow and no one has ever seen him since. He's not a ghost, surely someone must know where he went.